if you are a business owner and want to scale your business in a sustainable way with strong foundations, you need to know about working capital management. This will give you a strong cash flow position to succeed during any unexpected circumstances. Now, if you think this is interesting, you should definitely watch this video. Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about working capital management. Working capital management takes part into the operational finance of a company. So what is working capital? It's a financial metric or an indicator of the company's operations. It's centered to increase the liquidity of the company and also the main objective is to see the financial consequences of the operational decisions. This will be a direct consequence of the managerial decisions taken by the owners. So the main operational decisions are customer credit in days. This means that how much credit you give to your customers to sell your products. Let me give you an example. This is when you buy something with your credit card and you can pay back that product after 30 or 60 days. Also about the lead time. The lead time is the amount of time between the initiation and completion of a process to deliver a product to a customer. And the inventory purchase policy. This means how much inventory you will purchase to increase the service you give to your customers. And also the payments to suppliers. This is the amount of time a business takes to pay their suppliers. And this is a free financiation because their suppliers are basically paying it for you. For those of you who are new to this, this is a balance sheet. This is how a balance sheet looks like and actually it's a real one. So you, for in one side you have your assets and on another side you have the liabilities plus the equity, which is this part. So um, I want to show you which items are considered part of the working capital. These are the the items in the balance sheet that forms the the working capital which is cash receivables inventory payables other liabilities and the short-term loans which this is within a year of operations sometimes we get lost in the numbers so sometimes it's really good to give ourselves some visual graphs to know where are we standing so i'm going to show you how this will look like if we take a bar chart, which will look like this, the assets and the liabilities. Now, if you see, um, we can see that the receivables have a certain, it's around 3000, the inventory it's around a thousand and you can see in our past slide that is the same thing. It's around 3000 and 1000. So let's, let's keep on going. So I told you that out of all the items, just some items, form part of the working capital, which are this, the cash receivables, inventory, payables, and other liabilities and bank credit. So this will take part of your everyday operations because you these variables will move all the time in the balance sheet. Well, remember this, a balance sheet is kind of like a screenshot of the financial position of the company over a certain point in time. Let's work with that. Uh, do you remember this balance sheet? Now I want to show you how a balance sheet will look like in a visual representation. This is, I want to, to be very didactic here. So I want to take all the assets and compare with all the liabilities. So it will look like this. So now we have our balance sheet in a visual way. So. This is very easy to understand because we can see that we have lots of inventory and we have lots of receivables. And we, w one of the red flags that we, see here, that we see here is that we're running out of cash because we have very little cash compared to our payables or other liabilities, right? Sometimes people believe that a company that has lots of profits, it's in a strong financial position, but that doesn't mean anything. Companies with weak balance sheet will not survive. 
but a strong balance sheet, it's always a plus. So every company is very different, but this is a practical example for you to know that your operational decisions will take consequences. So here we can see that this company has uh, lots of inventory. So what we want to do is do a strategy so that we can increase our cash so that we can be a more liquid company and we can convert our sales into cash faster and we can scale our business because we need cash to continue operations. So one of the things that I would like to say is that if we have lots of inventory, it would be a good idea to purchase just the right amount of inventory. We don't want so much stock that doesn't move, right? And we also would like to take uh, money out of our customers earlier. And as well, we would like to uh, leverage ourselves with our suppliers. Our supp if, if we pay later to our suppliers, this is free financiation because they are paying for the, for the product. And if we manage to sell that product before we before the due date of the invoice, let's say if we owe some money to the suppliers and if we manage to sell that product before, we're really generating a lot of cash and we don't have to rely a lot from our banks. So with this strategy, our balance sheet would look like this. Now let's discuss the changes we see here. Here in the first column, is that we increase the cash by reducing our inventories. I will go back for a second. You can see that we didn't have a lot of cash here. And then we just decrease our inventory, just purchase the right amount. And this is the, the, the result. And on the, on, the left, on the right side, on our liabilities, we decided to increase our payables. Let's say um, purchase policy so that no supplier could get the money before 60 days. And this is sometimes something normal, but make sure that your suppliers are aware of that and have a good negotiation and always respect the dates. Okay, so instead of taking cash from the bank, we reduce the bank credit and we increase the payables policy. So this way we could increase our cash and Increase, increase our operational efficiency. So thank you guys. I, I, would, I would like to take a second for you to subscribe to the channel. And if you think these tips are really helpful for you to apply in your business, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment. It doesn't really take any time and it will help me a lot to continue doing these kind of videos. So to wrap up, uh, I want to remind you what is the working capital, the consequences of our operational decisions. And as we said, we need to take decisions over the customer credit, which is a sales policy. We need to, um, we need to make more efficient our supply chain management, which will give us um, an inventory purchase policy and better lead times to deliver to our customers. We want to make a purchase policy so that we have to negotiate the payments to our suppliers. Okay, so I hope you really like the video. Again, leave your comments below. And if you have, if you didn't understand something or anything, you can comment below and I will answer your questions. Okay, thank you very much.